Just in case y'all are curious about what kind of tea I'm having today, I'm having yuja cha. No, there we go, yuja cha. Because your girl, you know, she's been sick, she's recovering, and um, I'm convinced that this this helps. It's just, it's just, um, it's basically the equivalent of drinking like lemon and honey tea, except for it's yuja, which is a Korean citrus fruit, <laughs> and this is the most delicious stuff I've ever had in my life. Um, I order mine on Amazon because, you know, I can't just go to Korea and get it. I hope y'all have been well. I hope that none of y'all have been sick like, like I have. Um, you know, that's what happens when you travel too much in one month. Oh, that was, that was hot. And you drink too much and you're old. Oh, my hair's fabulous. Look at this. Yes. Yes. Giving siren realness. Yes, hunty. Mm. <laughs> Anyway, let's get this, let's get this video actually started, and hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about the titles on my shelf that have six or more volumes, but before I get into those, I do have a couple of series that I forgot I had because I had passed them along to my oldest son to try to get him to read them, and he didn't read them because he just for whatever reason, doesn't want to read manga, even the good ones. <laughs> and the other day I found them because I was helping clean his room. So the first one is Seven Billion Needles by Nobuaki Tadano. This actually has four volumes, but I don't own the fourth volume in physical form. Um, I do have it on my Kindle. This is an interesting series I have sort of talked about before. This is a series, this follows a young woman who was essentially killed by, like, um, a meteor. <laughs> but she ends up waking up, of course, alive and confused because she's like, wait a minute, didn't I? Turns out that this meteor was actually housing this being that was able to... I guess implant itself into her and also heal her and she has basically been chosen in a sense to save the world. <laughs> I do want to reread this so that I can give it a proper review but for now this is essentially what it's about. Next we have Blood Plus. This one has five volumes. I have had this series for a very long time and it's one that I absolutely love and I think it's one that a lot of people already know about so I probably shouldn't have to say too much about it but you know what maybe I will read it again and do a manga chat just in case some of y'all haven't read it. <laughs> Alright now let's get into these six volumes and up. I'm gonna try to move this quickly because my energy level is I can feel it going down. I thought I was feeling better than I actually am. So let's get this on the road. Let's get this, let's get this show on the road. Girl, by the way, I wised up this time and instead of grabbing the entire stack of a series, I'm only grabbing the, <laughs> the final volume. I don't know why it took me th freaking four videos <laughs> to figure this out. So dumb. So first up, I have Girls Last Tour by Suzu Mizu, Suku Mizu. I have talked about this series. I have a manga chat about it. I love it so much. If you have not read this, check out my manga chat and then go read it. Another six volume series is Complex Age by Yui Sakuma. I love this series to death. I don't know if I have a manga chat about it though. I don't think I do, but I have mentioned this many times. Um, I will say that I I definitely mentioned this in my, what is it, like five or six Jose titles you should read, but this is not a Jose title, and this is why I say demographics are dumb. They're dumb because I assumed this was a Jose title because um, the characters are all female, and it feels like it was written for a female audience, but this is actually a seinen, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what? 
A lot of people don't like to get into the demographics conversation and I don't know if y'all follow me on Twitter y'all probably saw whatever went down on Twitter I guess I made some people mad and one of my friends also made some people mad I don't care like if <laughs> if there's something wrong with me talking about the fact that um not all for example shoujo is romance and not all of the series that you read that um, you think are one thing are actually that. If that bothers you, then I don't know what to tell you because demographics are dumb. They don't matter. I know a lot of people say, oh, well, there's a reason they exist. The reason they exist is because of marketing. That's it. But that doesn't mean that no one else can buy it. That doesn't mean that the story, for example, within manga, just because something is targeted at a certain age group does not mean that only people in that target group can read it. I don't I don't understand people's hang-ups around it. And also, demographics are not genres. Demographics are not genres. I feel like I sound really angry right now. I promise I'm not angry, but I am a little bit annoyed because, oh, that's a loud vehicle. Okay. Also, just because a story has romantic elements does not mean that it is romance. Romance as a genre has a formula. Not all stories with romantic elements have the same formula as an actual romance story. Just saying. Next up I have a seven volume series. This is Behind the Scenes by Bisco Hattori. I have not read this series yet. I was waiting for this seventh volume to come out and it came out earlier this month. So um, I'm ready to read it. I just haven't. I did put this in my unread mug. If you follow me on Twitter you have seen this or on Instagram you have seen this. This is my mug that I have little papers with the titles of the unread series on my shelf and this series is in there so once it gets drawn out of that mug I will sit down and read this entire series. I believe this series is about a young man who goes to college and ends up joining the art club. I'm really excited because I love Oran High School Host Club which is also by Bisco Hattori which is also in the stack and I don't know I was I'm excited to read um, a story about older slightly older people than what she wrote in Oran you know so yeah I'm I'm excited. So an eight volume series I have is Chobits by Clamp. I've had this series for a long time. It's one of my earliest uh, manga series that I collected. It's about a young man who is kind of a loser and he ends up finding this robot. Like he lives in a time when everyone has robots or they're called Persicoms and he can't afford one because like I said he's a loser. <laughs> That's not very nice, but he is a loser. He finds this discarded Persicom, takes her home, uh, basically fixes her up, and it's it's really sweet. They they develop this really sweet relationship, and over time, um, love develops, and it brings up the question of can you know a human fall in love with an AI? Can an AI actually? feel like human emotions. It's a sweet story, but it's also very dark. It's clamp, so of course there's going to be dark undertones. I have reread this a couple of times, but it's been a while since I read it. I feel like this is a very polarizing series. Some people really love it. Some people don't. Um, I would say my favorite thing about this series that I can remember is Chi, um, the, the Persicon, the AI. She is so adorable. Her outfits are always on point. Um, and she's just like a sweet, innocent person who also grows up and doesn't necessarily stay sweet and innocent, if that makes sense. Like, she, I don't know. Anyway, 
I'll do a manga chat on this after I reread it. <laughs> so next up I have a nine volume series. This is Princess Jellyfish by Akiko Higashimura. Everyone knows about this series. I really don't need to go into it. This is so great. I love it so much. Akiko Higashimura is a queen and she deserves all the things. Speaking of Akiko Higashimura, I also have Tokyo Tatareba Girls. All of the physical copies have not been released yet. I want to say maybe volume 8 is already out. I read this when it was digital first or digital only for a while. So I <laughs> read this series like a long time. I read this series before people were talking about it and I know that sounds very hipster like mmm but I really did. A lot of y'all don't be reading digital manga because y'all are too good and then you you know miss out because y'all almost missed out on this. I'm just gonna say y'all almost missed out because this very they very well could have decided to not print this so y'all got lucky because I want to say I started reading this when the first digital volume came out. Um, I, I stumbled upon it because I had been reading Princess Jellyfish and I was like I really like her I want to see what else she's written and I got on Amazon I think um, and I saw Tokyo Tatanapa Girls and I was like ooh what's this and I saw that it was digital only so I went ahead and bought it and then I read it and I was like this is great so I had to I was reading it as it was coming out in digital form so f literally from the beginning and I just loved it so much and I remember thinking ooh I really hope that they print physical copies because I would like to put this on my shelf like this is so great I would re I would definitely buy the entire series all over again just to have the physical form and I want to say it took a, it was like a year at least a year before it before I found out that it was finally going to be printed like I y'all I had to wait <laughs> Y'all got lucky, okay? Girl, I don't know what y'all's problem is about digital freaking manga. Y'all are just so weird. Oh my gosh. Y'all missing out on great series because y'all don't want to read digital. I mean, I'm sure I know some of y'all have valid reasons, but... Another nine volume series is Everyone's Getting Married by Izumi Miyazono. I've talked about this a lot. I was a guest on a podcast called Shoujo and Tell and we talked about this series and I professed my love for it, but we also pointed out some things that are not so perfect about it. You know, not every series, there is no such thing as a perfect series. Even your faves have some things that make you give it a side eye. Next up is Sailor Moon. Y'all have to have no, wait, did I have it backwards? I do. Next up I have Sailor Moon. This is a 12 volume series. I have not done a manga chat about this one and I won't because this is one that, you know, at this point my input, my opinions about this series, I don't think really matter. There have been several people who have broken down this series, um, you know, in a way that I don't care to because it's just too much. It's too much time. Um, but I will say that I like Sailor Moon. There are a lot of things in this series that I do not like. Um, but overall, I think this is a series that, um, you know, deserves its accolades. If, you know, I, I just, it's a series that has become so ingrained in popular culture that even people who don't really read manga or watch anime know about it, you know? And that's amazing. And you know, Na Naoko Takeuchi is a queen, you know? And that's, I mean, that's all I can say about that, you know? Like, it's just... Next I have Dead Man Wonderland. This is by Jinsei Kataoka and Kazuma Kondo. 
I really enjoy this series. I think a lot of people already know about Dead Man Wonderland. Um, I started reading this, I don't know, years ago. I think the first vol, like the first volume, was out, and that was it. And I picked it up, and I was like, "This is interesting." And I read it, and I loved it. And so I just followed it from there. Um, and it's definitely gory and bloody. It's about a young boy who um is in school he's in class when his entire class gets murdered <laughs> by something and he gets blamed for it and ends up going to this cr this crazy prison with people that are all um demented or <laughs> demented and have like crazy powers and things like that and he is forced to fight against these crazy people it's I'm sure there's like a movie or something that could be compared to it but I can't think of it off the top of my head because I'm sick like I said Oren High School Host Club by Bisco Hatori is on this list I I love this one. This is one of the first manga series I read. I've said this before, Fruits Basket was my first. This was like my second or third. It's been so long, I can't quite remember exactly the order. It has a lot of sentimental value for me. And I also was, again, a guest on Shoujo and Tell, and we talked about Oren, and that was a re those were, we were, we did two episodes, and that was just a really fun time talking to those ladies, um, and gushing over our faves. Um, it was very interesting reading this as a much older person. When I first started reading this, I was in my early 20s, and, um, I hadn't reread it since then, I don't think. And so, reading it again to prepare for the podcast was very interesting because there were some things that I was like, oh, this is why I don't really read high school stories anymore. But then there were other things that I thought, oh my gosh, I love this so much. <laughs> because it took me back to the time when I loved high school stories, especially high school romance. That includes uh, Korean dramas centered around high school um, manga since around high school. I used to love that stuff. And I think it was because I, there was a time when I still missed high school. But girl, it's been so long since, I, like, I graduated high school in 2004. Some of y'all were in elementary school in 2000. Some of y'all may not, were some, some of y'all may not have even been born yet. <laughs> Next, I have Holic by Clamp. This is also one of my earlier manga series. I love this one so much. I actually, when I first started collecting this, it was being printed in these single volumes. Um, actually, let me, I'll show you what they look like. Ooh, oh my gosh, I'm so old. <clears throat> So when they were first being printed by Del Rey, um, they were in single volumes. I had collected up to volume 10, and I actually, what had happened was <laughs> there was a, pe a period of time where I had stopped collecting this um, because I was collecting so many other series. And so when I got back around to collecting them, these single volumes were not available. and. Kodansha had taken over and they were printing the omnibus versions, omnibuses. So I was a little sad because I was like, wait, the, I love these single ones. But then I also was like, well, I guess the omnibuses will save space. <sighs> so yeah, I was sad. And I went ahead and decided to um, take volume 10 out of my collection since um, the omnibus the the omnibus directly after volume 9 starts with volume 10 so i use volume 10 for like decorative purposes paul it follows a young man or a young boy named watanuki and he is he's an orphan and he sees spirits he's like plagued by these spirits that just follow him around he's a very 
morose kid um, but at the same time he's also he's he's kind and he's just I really I have such a soft spot for him I really like him as a character he's such a good boy <laughs> he's just so good um, but anyway he he one day he comes across this little shop that kind of comes out of nowhere and he goes in and that's when he meets my waifu Yuko is this mysterious gorgeous woman who owns this shop and he ends up staying and working with her and he learns over time that she knows a lot of things that he didn't realize she knew and it's because she's like sort of like a witch type character through his dealings with Yuko he learns about himself also makes friends grows to be he just grows up and ugh, I, I love this series so much um, and I actually want to reread it. <laughs> when I talk about this series it makes me want to reread it and that's what I love. Those are the types of series that I love to keep on my shelves because those are the ones that just th those are the ones that have the most value because y'all know like surely y'all know that when you're buying manga like these are not things that you are necessarily going to be able to um, make money from later not really like if you're reselling your manga you're definitely not able to sell it for the price that you paid for them unless it's something like super rare so I don't buy I don't collect manga with the thought of like ooh, it's gonna make me money later I buy it for the uh, like the sentimental value the emotional value like just the what is what am I trying to say the value that it brings to my life <laughs> it's like it's intangible next I have fruits basket this is another one that I love so much I enjoy rereading I've only actually read it twice um, I have a video where I talk about um, my experience rereading it and I would like to reread this again I think I want to make it like a yearly thing where I maybe in the spring like maybe I'll reread this every spring and I'll reread Holic every fall you know make a little tradition out of it and see how I feel about it every time I read it it's great finally I have Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle. This is an omnibus version. Um, there are only 10 omnibuses, but this actually contains volumes 27 and 28. I have not read this. I fully intend to read it. Whenever I draw it out of that mug, I'm reading it. This does cross over with Holic, but a lot of Clamp's works have little crossovers, and that's one of the things I love about them is how they've created this whole world that their characters can fit into. I just enjoy it so much. I love them. I'm a stan. I stand for Clamp. And on that note, sit down and read your manga. Bye. <laughs> oh, by the way, I wanted to come on here and say thank y'all so much for watching and subscribing. I know I don't say it a whole lot, but it's there. I really appreciate y'all. You know, let's let's have a little, let's have a little chat. I'm not the type who is going to ask you to like and subscribe and do all of those things because that's not really my goal here. My goal is not really to get you to subscribe. My goal is to get you to read manga. That's that's my actual genuine goal is to encourage people to sit down and read your manga, especially people who maybe would not normally read manga because they feel like they can't, because they feel like they don't look like the people that they see reading manga, or maybe they feel like manga is not for people of their age group. So the fact that the amount of people that have subscribed to me have done so is amazing, and I really genuinely appreciate every single one of y'all. Even like those, those of y'all who are also following me on Instagram and on Twitter, like, it really does, it makes me happy when my numbers go up because that means that that's just that many more people that are interested in manga and that makes me very happy. The numbers, if you really love manga, the numbers don't matter. And so, what the heck? Is that a bug? Ooh, what are you doing? Ooh, no, ooh, no.
Ooh, bud. Ooh, ooh. I'm sorry to end your life, but you can't be roaming around on my floor. Ooh, no. <clears throat> anyway, I just wanted to say thank y'all. And that's it. I'm going to go sit down and read your manga. <laughs>